So if you want to develop a cool lifestyle, you got to practice the lifestyle every day. So if it's nightlife, you got to go out every day and network, right? If it's, you know, creating cool business events, you got to like immerse yourself in that world. When Luis was making millions of dollars running a kid's channel, Luis, how much hours a day were you putting into it? It was my whole life. All day, every day? Yeah, from the moment I wake up to nighttime, I was obsessed. And then at night, if you wake up to use the restroom, the idea hits me, I'm like, oh, fuck, and I write it down. It's like, you fucking hold on. That's all you did, yeah. right? You know, so, I mean, the lifestyle, does that, what does that mean? Getting laid for you guys? Like, what does that mean exactly? Because for different people, it means different things. Like, just shout out. There's no right or wrong answer. Like, what does that mean for you? What does it mean? Freedom. Freedom? What, what about you, David? Just abundance in every aspect. So girls, money, yeah. networking. What about you, bro? Having a good rotation. A good rotation of girls? Okay. So again, lifestyle means completely different things to everyone else. So like, I, like for me to teach you guys, I need to know what that means to you. What does it mean to you? Lifestyle. For, what, what does it mean to you? Connections and development to experience. Like what? Clothes, enjoyment. Cool. Uh, getting business done, making deals. Cool, dude. Guys, what else? Being able to do what you want when you want, like not having to take orders from anyone. Sure. sure. So like social freedom, all that cool stuff. So it sounds like you guys want to create like a lifestyle that, almost like creating like a community that we can live in. Phil, I was talking about about this a couple weeks ago. Yeah. You know, creating like a community yeah. that we can like, like why do you think I'm doing this? You know? I, I don't know what I'm doing here, guys. Like I, I'm just like doing stuff and adjusting the course. But obviously I've done tons of seminars. The last seminar we did was about a year ago, but before that I didn't do a seminar until like 2018, you know? But I just thought it'd be a cool thing to create. We could all create this together, right? So, you know, the best way to do this is through consistency. So if you want to go out and have freedom, the best way is practice social freedom, which the best way I know is cold approach pickup. Talk to strangers every single fucking day. I don't know a better way to live freedom besides doing that, right? That's what got me to where I'm at. So it's like, if I have a girlfriend who's like being bitchy with me or playing power games, I'll tell her to go fuck and fuck off, right? Respectfully, right? But I'm like, <laughs> I'm like you're a hoe, fuck off. <laughs> joking, joking, joking. But um, the whole point is like, let's say, let's say you, I, I had a girlfriend who's extremely demanding. Meet my family, sure, met her family. Wants me to play the boyfriend role, but she's trying to change who I was. So I was like, look, this is not who I am. If you don't like it, you can leave, right? Why? Because I have the abundance and know-how to replace her. She's from Ukraine. Within a week, I had a brand new Ukrainian girlfriend. <laughs> Within one week, brand new Ukrainian girlfriend. And I told her, I'm like, hey, just so you know, I have a new Ukrainian girlfriend who replaced you. Thanks. I just want you to know. <laughs> okay, see ya. Right? The whole point, but that's, that's freedom. Right? That's abundance. Okay? Because of the consistency. If I didn't have all that momentum, I wouldn't be able to replace them. Right? So that's really important. So that means going out daily. And stop jerking off, guys. Stop jerking off. That's kind of gay. In fact, if you touch your dick, dude, that's homosexual. <laughs> you just touched a man's cock. <laughs> Look, teach their own, guys. It's 2024. If, if you guys are bisexual, if you're into that, that's cool. If you're bi, if you're gay, if you're into dudes, whatever, that's fine. But like, bro, like, I don't want to touch my own dick, dude. You know, I pee in the shower. I don't touch my own dick. You know, if I jizz, I have to jizz in the girl because I can't touch my dick. I can't pull out. I'm joking, I'm joking. But like, stop jerking off because it's not going to get you the results you want to get, right? It's not gonna get you the results you wanna get. Truly, it's not, right? You know, I'll have, I'll, <laughs> this is fucked up, but I have parties where every time we do like a really, really big party, I'll smash like four to five girls at night, right? I'll pop a Viagra. My go-to is a Viagra and a caffeine pill. <laughs> because here's the thing. The other thing I'll do is I won't nut because I know if I nut, I'm done for the night. I, I told Luis last night, he's like, yo, let's have an orgy with the girls. I'm like, I don't even care, bro. Cause like, you know, I already nutted this chick. Right? Hope she's on birth control. But uh, the whole point is like, you know, unless I pop a Viagra, like we, we can't keep going. Cause we, cause I smashed this chick and then I had another girl that one of my um, old students who's one of my promoters now brought to the party. And this guy, my student's like on this, on this girl, but she's just like, I want him. She like pointed at me. She's like, I want this guy. Or, or she said like, cause he's like a little Indian guy too. And he's like, you guys look similar, but he's hot. And I'm like, you're mean, be nice to my friend. Right? And I asked, I asked Manny, I'm like, Manny, can I go for it? He's like, yeah, I fucking go for it. I don't care. And, I'm, and like next thing I know she's in my bed, we're making out. She's like Moroccan. She's like speaking Arabic and shit. And I was like, I don't know, I'm annoyed. This girl keeps not speaking English. But the whole point, right? It's like if you jerk off, if you like 
premature ejaculate, you're not even gonna have the willpower to actually go make it happen, right? There's something crazy about, dude, you should just see my game after like, it, I don't remember the last time I made it two weeks without busting a nut, but if I can make it two weeks of not nutting, dude, my game is fucking nuts. Like, I mean, you saw me run game the other night, right? Yeah. And that was just from like the love for the game and the love of like the social momentum. So the whole point is like the momentum you get. So jerking off, don't do it. Don't do it. Do, do you guys know what the NoFap community is? Yeah. 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 So I used to be like a huge advocate for the NoFap community, but I'm at a point where I'm like, it's just the thought of you jerking, like, like I, eventually like it becomes so normal. Like the idea of jerking off to me is just like, it's the wrong, <sighs> like just the thought of jerking off, it, like at this level, it's like, are you, are you serious? Like, are, are you kidding me? Like, like to me, it's like, bro, it's like, I, I've gotten to a point where it's like, if a guy's like, Justin, like, how do I stop jerking off? And like, dude, stop, stop touching your dick. Like, what the fuck? That's like, what goes to my head? You know, I, I become at a level where like, I don't relate to a lot of my students. You know, maybe you guys saw it on boot camp. Like, some of the, like, I, I can't relate to some of the problems anymore, right? Because it, it's just so elementary, right? I remember how difficult it was to stop jerking off when I first start, stopped jerking off. It took me years to quit that though. It is a very hard addictive thing. It's a psychological addiction. And you just got to accept that, you know, your, what kind of life do you want to have? My first girlfriend I had, smashed all the dude. I got super pissed. I sent nudes to her dad. Oh, it's really bad. I got in trouble, dude. I had legal issues from that because it's illegal to send, like, send nudes to a girl's dad. I was like fucking 19, 20 years old, right? The pain of that breakup and the pain of like, fuck, I have criminal charges that I had to beat in like court and all this shit. It was fucked. Like, I was just like, okay, this girl really loved me. So every time I fuck a new girl, would be a giant fuck you to her. And that the best way to do that would be not jerking off, right? And that's kind of like how I framed it to quit jerking off. So that's personally what I did. For some of you guys, man, it's just, I don't know, find a pain point that's hard enough to stop jerking off, right? That's what I recommend, you know? You live and you learn though. The other thing you can do is 10 approaches minimum. Everyone here understands what a cold approach pickup is, right? Everyone understands that? You sure? Everyone understands what cold approach pickup is, yes or no? Yeah. Everyone understands that? So, do t when's the last meeting you cold approach? Tuesday. When's the last meeting you cold approach? If you're not doing cold approach every day, you're setting yourself up for failure. Guys, I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, you're setting yourself up for failure every single fucking day. I've been doing this for 10 years. I slept with just under 500 women, okay? I've got a super hot girlfriend. I actively try to meet new women to find a hotter girlfriend who's a better fit than my girlfriend and I can't. She's feminine, super conservative values, which I love, right? She's very wholesome, not a hoe, doesn't want to party, doesn't drink, doesn't have TikTok or Instagram on her phone, doesn't have an Instagram account. You know what she does have on the phone? The Bible, okay? She has the Bible on her phone, right? Just accepts me for who I am. She tells me, be good. Please don't fuck any bitches this weekend, right? She leaves her, her Nintendo Switch here, and she's like, please don't play with Nintendo Switch with any girls. It's worse than cheating. <laughs> That's what she told me last night. I'm like, no promises, right? And I'm still doing the cold approach every fucking night, dude. Me and Michael are gonna be out all summer fucking your future ex-girlfriend. Do you understand that? I want you to understand that. We're gonna be out all summer piping the chick that one of you guys are gonna end up dating because you were too much of a pussy to cold approach her and then you eventually met her on Tinder. Do you guys understand? If you had just done the cold approach two months in advance, Michael would never have jizz in her face, okay? <laughs> do you guys understand that? I want you to understand that. So just do the approaches. I want you to understand that because it'll keep the girl's body count low if you just do the approaches. Because the worst, the last, you know, it's really fucked up, dude. I started dating this chick. <laughs> Three years ago, I should have known because I met her at a sex party. Should have known. She spent three days in my house. I didn't even have her on Instagram. After three days, I'm like, fuck, I really like this girl. Add her on Instagram. We're pretty much in a relationship. I have like 30 mutual friends with her. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> All the mutual friends were like the top fuck boys I know. It's like my buddy who's like a billionaire. Just like a bunch of dudes in my soul circle, like promoters and shit. And eventually I found out, because we ended a relationship. By the end of the relationship, I found out she fucked like seven guys I knew. I'm just like, God damn it. This girl broke my heart two years ago. Broke my fucking heart. I saw her out two weeks ago. 
I started out two weeks ago. She had put on at least 100 pounds. She aged like milk. Yeah. And I'm with my brother and my, my old roommate, Alfredo, and my buddy Frank, who actually introduced me to this girl. And I'm just looking at him like, <laughs> but almost like I felt bad. I was like, holy shit. What the, what the hell happened to this girl? Holy fuck. Dude, she had wrinkles on her face because me and her are the same age. Damn. Oh, bad. Dude, I got jacked, became a multimillionaire, and since her, I slept with like, I don't know, like 180 chicks, 200 girls. I don't fuck. Probably like 200 girls since I last saw her. You know? I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow. This girl looks like she got hit by a truck. And then my girlfriend's like a 10 now. I'm like, God damn. And I was, I, I didn't have to think like, oh, I won. I'm just like, I felt bad for her. But I look at my little brother and I'm like, brother, remember, you know, keep working on yourself. Don't, don't stop working on yourself. <laughs> you know, cause these bitches that broke your heart, that's what they end up being, right? It's very important. You gotta take massive action. Cause it could have worked on the contrary, guys. I could have said, you know, become a fat loser in my late twenties. Haven't got laid in the last two years. You know, she has a new boyfriend or whatever. You know, people go their separate ways, right? But instead I won. By any measure of success, you know, I won. This girl broke my heart, but I won. Cause I used the pain to fuel me, right? Does that make sense guys? Yes or no? Yeah. And I took massive action. 